Hi everyone, Mr. Fitzpatrick here. Today we're going to learn about the mysterious Minoans. I'd like you to understand who the Minoans were and what importance they had on ancient Greece. And I would like you to print out from my website the chart on the eight themes of civilization and try to identify as many in as many ways as possible um, how the Minoans fit into these, the Minoan civilization fit into these eight themes of civilization. Taking a look at this map, we're going to focus right down here. Here's mainland Greece, and right down here we have the island of Crete. This is where the Minoans are from. They are known as the Minoans, but often called Cretans as well. Okay, about these Minoans and Cretans, I just kind of want to um, pass this along. That much of what we know about them is based on theory and archaeological evidence, but history changes based on what archaeologists find, and it's always happening. So what we are learning today could change tomorrow based on what is found. There are still archaeological digs taking place at this very minute. All right, let's take a look at these Minoans. This here is a piece of their writing. It is known as Linear A. It is still in undeciphered. As you can take a, you can take a look at this, you can see some things that look like they might be something that seems familiar to you. This seems like an A or maybe like a trident. You can see a circle here. Um, this to me looks like a cursive J, but obviously that's not what it is. And you see little dashes and little marks. Again, this is their writing. Linear A, still undeciphered. Let's take a look at some of the frescoes that were found in some of the villas that were excavated. Uh, as you can see here, this man has a bunch of fish. Perhaps this is specialization of labor. Um, you can see that he's dark skinned. These Minoans lived mostly an outdoor lifestyle. Again, you see here the darker colored skin. You also see um, they had jewelry. We'll see in a little bit. They were big into metalworking. Perhaps these are slaves. Perhaps they're not. Perhaps they're just working and serving. Again, here you can see with the jewelry in the hair. Uh, these are, or look to be, three women. Women held a pretty high place in the Minoan society, were well respected. Now let's talk about the natural resources. Although today Crete is pretty much um, deforested, there's not many trees there at all. Back then there were many forests and timber was a main export of the Minoans. Other exports were wheat and wool and barley and grapes, but their main one, their main export would have been olives. Olives to create olive oil. They also had a very good navy. They were really not tested for quite a long time. Their civilization only showed lots of weapons within um, you know many of the archaeological sites later um, later in time and they believe that was due to the emergence of the mainland Greeks or the Mycenaeans which we'll look at in a few minutes when you take a look at this ship you see the prow that was for ramming these ships were designed to ram other ships they were technologically advanced in the area of metalworking there were Lots of pieces of jewelry found, gold plates with um, images embedded in them. You can see this one here. Take a look. You see the bull, and you see a person flipping over the bull. We'll get to that in a few minutes as well. Take a look at this picture. Hit pause, and try to explain what you think is going on here. Who are these people? What are they doing? Go. Okay, if you're back now, 
If you look closely, this is a ship. They're on a boat. You can see the moorings, the water in the background. These guys here in the foreground right here, these are Minoans. And they are trading. Who are they trading with? Well, if you remember from last year, this look, this is an Egyptian. So it just goes to show you that the Minoans traded what is probably in these in these containers here, probably wine or olive oil, okay, all over the Mediterranean sea coast, even as far as Egypt. On the island itself, there are remains. This is the remains of the Palace of Gnosis. You take a look carefully there, you can see, again, a bull. Let's look at this picture here. And there it is. So obviously the bull held some sort of significance to the Minoans. This palace had networks of large storage containers. So they were technologically pretty advanced for their time period. This is perhaps what the palace looked like back in its heyday. It's pretty cool. Frescoes or paintings on the wall are found in many of the villas and archaeological dig sites on the island of Crete. As you can see here, the dolphins and fish, they lived a lifestyle that was of the sea. Perhaps this is the throne of the king himself, King Minos. Also found were many double axes. This double axe is a symbol. Um, the word labyrinth actually means the house of the double axe. And then we heard in class the other day about the labyrinth and what it stood for, but we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Again, more of the double axes found on Crete. In order to export their olive oil and their wine, they would have used pottery. Again, we talked before about the bull and its emphasis and importance on the island and to the people. There are also fresco frescoes. You can see here these two guys are boxing or fighting. So there was interest in sport. This here is an image of their goddess. The Minoans deified the natural world and found in it a logical order that allowed man to live in harmony with the natural environment. There were sacrifices of the bull and there were games like Tarakatharpsia, or bull leaping, which we'll look at in a minute, that revolved around some Minoan religious festivals, often worshipping the great female nature goddess that you see here. There was dancing, music, prayer. And here's bull leaping or bull vaulting, where they would grab onto the horns of the bull and be flung over the bull, somersault off the bull into the waiting arms of another person. Pretty dangerous, but I'm sure it was pretty exciting. History can also be derived from stories written by authors many years later. These authors usually lived hundreds of years later, so their stories are often based on other stories that were passed down. And that's what brings us to the story of King Minos and Theseus and the Minotaur. Minos is supposed to sacrifice his most prized bull each year to Poseidon, and once he couldn't do it, so Poseidon made Minos' wife fall in love with the bull. And you get a half man, half bull. He builds a labyrinth to house the Minotaur, 
And at one point in time, Minos' true son was killed by Athen Athenians, so his vengeance was to have these Athenians sacrifice young men and women every seven years to the Minotaur until Theseus had had enough and was going to stand up to the Minotaur. And that's what brings us to the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. As you know, in the end, Theseus kills the Minotaur, takes the head, wraps it, and takes it back to Athens with him. The death of the Minotaur signifies the death of the Minoan civilization. Remember, this is a story told by Athenians about the Minoans. The Minoans would not have written this type of story about themselves. And that's the end of the Minoan civilization. came to an end around 1400 BC, and again, we're not sure, exactly sure how it came to an end. Theory one is they were invaded by Mycenaeans, and the Mycenaeans destroyed the Minoans as trade rivals. Another theory is there was a massive volcanic eruption on the island of Terra, and it showered Crete with debris and ash and poison gas, eventually destroying all of their crops, tidal waves destroying their fleets, and that was the end of the Minoans. So, it's up for you to decide. Pause, take a look at this, and we'll talk tomorrow in class. Thanks. Have a good night.